all of us know about the statement Jesus made in Matthew 24, verse 11 regarding the last days, which was that many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And most of us know about men like Benny Hinn or Hal Lindsey and Pat Robertson who have made some astonishing claims and even gave specific dates for certain events they said would happen in the future. And so far, 100% of their predictions have failed. Worse yet, some of these men like Robertson have made many false predictions in a row, but for some strange reason, many people still clamor after him as if he's to be trusted. And so, yes, we all know, well, those of us that read Bibles, we know what a false prophet is, as the basic definition is found in Deuteronomy 18.22, which says, When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Or Ezekiel 13, 7, it says, Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. And so again, most people know how to point out a false prophet on that one biblical fact. But when you add up all the false prophets out there today using that one definition, there's only a dozen or so because most people know it's better to not play the prophet seeing how if you are ever mistaken, you're going to be tagged a false prophet. Still, some men and even a few women can't seem to contain themselves and so they keep making false predictions, making it that much easier for the elect who cannot be deceived to avoid them. And I'm talking about preachers. I'm not talking about so-called psychics. That's just all a bunch of uh, sleight of hand, if you will. But what about the fact that that Jesus said many false prophets, and how some claim a dozen or so isn't that many. Well, it's because most people are unaware of the other definition for a prophet, be they true or false. It states in Isaiah 8.20, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Long ago, when the word of God was still being penned, men and women of God would declare things the Lord himself moved them to speak so as to eventually build up the road map to heaven most Christians today call the Bible. And so when they spoke doctrinal truths, those that had wisdom understood them to be the truth, and this was especially true after a few books of the Bible were already penned. They had, thus saith the Lord already in writing. And when new light was put forth by a prophet, it was always verified by the light already given. And so... When these prophets spoke and it was proven to be accurate and inspired of God, as Isaiah 820 suggests, it was declared a prophesied doctrine. That is how the Bible grew to the 66 books we have today. But every now and then someone who was not a prophet would come forward declaring God spoke to them and they went about relating his supposed word to the people. Well, when the elders of the truth examined it and found it to be false, that person was declared a false prophet. So, it isn't always prophesying about a future event that makes the prophet. Sometimes the prophet will just speak doctrinally. And that makes sense when you think about it, because if it had not been written down in the word as of yet, for a prophet to come forward declaring it was truth and therefore should be in the word because God told them to put it there, they were considered prophesying because what they spoke was never spoken before. And so when that happened, everyone assumed that they were prophesying. And when it was proven to be from the Lord by seeing how it didn't contradict his already penned truth, they simply placed it in the Holy Writ. Now, getting back to the statement Jesus made about many false prophets being alive today. Yes, we have a dozen or so that declare certain future events that never came true. But we also have literally millions that declare doctrines that are nowhere to be found in the Word of God. In fact, using the basic definition or description of truth found in Isaiah 8.20, we see millions of false prophets declaring all sorts of things that go directly against God's written Word. Not only are they lying when they say he told them to preach this fall to all, all of their doctrines go directly against his already prophesied statements in those 66 books. Take the Sabbath for a rock-hard example of this biblical truth. From Genesis to Revelation, it is declared to be the seventh day of the week, which from creation week itself was Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. And this is even centuries before any Jew was ever even born. 
which then easily nullifies the claim that it's only a Jewish Sabbath. Yet, literally tens of millions of Sunday-keeping pastors and priests all over this fallen, sin-sick world have been declaring since March 7th of 321 AD, when Constantine set up the first Sunday laws, that the Sabbath was somehow changed from the seventh day of the week to the first day of the week. And nary a single Bible verse was ever presented to back that claim, which then confirms they are all false prophets. And yes, this means if you are in a Sunday-keeping church, your pastor is one of millions of these false prophets of today. Or as Jesus stated, he, or even she for that matter, is one of the many false prophets that were to come in these last days. But that basic definition of a false prophet has always been hidden. And now we see why. Now, yes, some of these false prophets have recently put forth a few verses that they claim declare Sunday is the Sabbath because now we actually have the Bible in written form. But not only were all of these verses taken completely out of context to preach a lie, and I proved this in detail in this video that I made years ago, but every one of them are from a denomination whose founder has stated in writing that there is no such Bible verse to declare Sunday is the Sabbath, not one. Every forefather on earth has stated in writing that the Sabbath was never changed, and I share most of their quotes on this page on my website. So that all being said, who do you suppose was responsible for this changing of the times and laws of God? When speaking of the man of sin in Rome, the real prophet Daniel said in Daniel 7.25 that the popes will think to change times and laws. And if you want proof it is the popes of Rome Daniel is speaking of here, see my characteristics of Antichrist page and all the videos that are on that page when you get time. Well, since Daniel declares the popes will change the times and the laws of the Creator God, we have to wonder if there is any documented proof in historic record that the popes of Rome actually do take credit for changing the Sabbath to Sunday, thereby changing the law of God, or as Daniel put it, changing times and laws. One such quote from the Church of Rome states the following. They said, Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible, and this transference of Sabbath observance is proof of that fact. Now, did you notice, not only does the Vatican call Sunday their mark, they declare it their mark by how everyone on earth bows to their Sabbath over the true Sabbath. That's why they said transference of Sabbath. In other words, as prophesied, all the world wondered after her, and she boasts of this with demonic pride. Well, since the laws of the land have recently changed, making it childishly easy for all the government-approved priests and preachers to pass religious laws thanks to their prophesied 501c3 contract that helped each of them design their churches after the image of the beast in Rome, and since we have thousands of articles confirming they have been planning Sunday laws for well over 100 years in modern history alone, do you not see the many false prophets Jesus spoke of now all over the place? I mean, absolutely every single Sunday-keeping church on the planet is in fact home to one of these false prophets who stand on the pulpit declaring the Creator who sanctified the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath, 6,000 years ago, somehow changed his mind and changed the Sabbath to Sunday, yet there's not a Bible verse from Genesis to Revelation to back that up. In fact, Rome, who changed it, admits this in writing. The Lord never declared such a doctrine. That means... His written word declares in all 66 books that they are in fact lying for the Pope in Rome because as also prophesied, they have joined with him so as to move all their flock to wonder after the beast in Rome just like the prophecy predicted. And soon the plagues will fall and those in bed with Rome will die for it is also written in Deuteronomy 18.20 that the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And do you want to see how boldly accurate Christian prophecy really can be? It was also prophesied in Ezekiel 22, verses 26 to 28, that her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. 
Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves ravening the prey, to shed blood and to destroy souls and to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. Well, they have made a breach in the wall, as prophecy said. And they have sought to fill the gap that they made with that hole with the untempered mortar of a Roman Catholic Sabbath. But it was also prophesied that some of us, the remnant people of God, will go forth to repair that breach that they have made in the wall. For it states in Isaiah 58, verses 12 to 14, that they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwelling, if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to write upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Thank you for watching. God bless.